Michael. Well, thank you, Kathy. To get this economy moving again, we have to uh, can't take have health care reform, anymore. we have to have tax can't reform, the- but we also have to relieve our small businesses and entrepreneurs of the regulatory burden. Dodd-Frank represents the greatest regulatory burden on our economy, more so than all the other Obama-era regulations combined. And that's why it's so critical that tomorrow the House passes the Financial Choice Act. Dodd-Frank broke all of its promises. It said it would lift the economy. Instead, we're stuck in the slowest, weakest recovery in the post-war era. It said that it would end too big to fail, but instead, cynically, it codified it into law with the taxpayer bailout fund. It said it would stabilize our economy, make it more secure, but instead the big banks are bigger, the small banks are fewer. Our corporate bond markets are seeing historic levels of illiquidity and volatility. It said they promised us that it would help the consumers, yet free checking at banks has been cut in half. Bank fees are up. Mortgages are more difficult to come by. They cost hundreds more dollars to close. But there is a better way economic growth for all, bank bailouts for none. It's the Financial Choice Act. It simply tells banks that if you will purchase the equivalent of a privately financed insurance policy against failure, something known as a 10% simple leverage ratio, we'll give you a Dodd-Frank off-ramp. We will replace complexity with simplicity. We will replace bailouts with bankruptcy for large financial institutions. We will throw a needed life preserver to our community banks and credit unions because entrepreneurship is at a generational low in America. It takes small banks and small credit unions to lend to small businesses, again, the job engine of America. The Financial Choice Act cannot get passed soon enough. So once again, hardworking Americans who haven't seen a pay increase Uh, since Dodd-Frank was enacted, can see their American dream realized yet again. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all of the members of the House Financial Services for the work on this important legislation. I am so happy to be here uh, working to advance the passage of the Financial Choice Act. America's farmers, workers, businesses, households, Savers and investors deserve the flexibility and access to credit that the Choice Act will give them. As a former mayor, I know that both families, towns, and uh, people need greater access to credit. Um, When we were building our libraries and building our community parks, it's the people that were in our cities that were helping us. Um, When a farmer needed a tractor to plow his fields, um, it's the banks in the towns that would be able to give them access to credit. We need a strong, innovative, and accessible financial system. Currently under Dodd-Frank, that isn't the case. Uh, For example, one of my constituents uh, owns a successful catering business, but is unable to expand because every time she goes out to get a small loan, she is stunted by uh, red tape and regulation. Massive government regulations are hurting people, not helping people. Community banks, which provide small bank loans, are closing at a rate of one bank per day. Middle to low income families are getting higher fees, less access to credit, and less customer service than ever before. Everyone deserves a chance to achieve their American dream. The Choice Act is a bold step towards achieving the American priority for faster economic growth and job creation. Um, We're excited. I hope that everyone's excited about actually talking about policy and getting the work done for the American people. Thank you. You know, the whole focus of this administration, this Congress, is jobs and action. If you just look at the quorum report on the first 100 days of this Congress, goes through and looks and analyzes back to George H.W. Bush's Congress and forward. The number of bills passed in the first 100 days, this Congress, the 115th, has passed the most at 103. That allowed when analyzing based upon the presidencies in the first 100 days of the number of bills that were signed. President Barack Obama was able to sign 15. President Trump was able to sign 30. And we continue that work this week. The Choice Act. A recent um, center came forward and said Dodd-Frank imposed more regulation on business 
than any other law passed during the Obama administration combined. In doing so, approximately 1,900 banks, many of which were community financial institutions, have disappeared. If the community banks disappear, capital disappears. If capital disappears, small business, jobs creation disappears as well. But what if you are an American and you weren't creating a new business? Has Dodd-Frank regulation imposed and harmed you? As the chairman stated, 75% of banks used to offer free checking before Dodd-Frank became law. In 2016, that was down to 36%. Everyone has been harmed by this legislation. I want to credit Chairman Henserling. He has taken the time to study. He has taken the time to work to protect the taxpayer so no longer will there be a bailout, secure the institutions, and at the same time create jobs. No easy feat, not easy to accomplish, but he's going to be able to move it this week on the floor. Just another one of the goals that we had set if we were able to achieve the majority again, and we're keeping our promise. Tomorrow, the House is going to take strong action in passing the Financial Choice Act to provide relief for families who are suffering under the failures of Dodd-Frank. Uh, as Chairman Henserling and Mia Love talked about, uh, you can just see in every one of our communities how Dodd-Frank has been devastating uh, family businesses, uh, the ability for small businesses to get loans, uh, the fact that a, a local community bank closes every single day because of the unworkable, devastating regulations of Dodd-Frank. The law has failed miserably, and it's made it harder uh, for families to get free checking. It's made it harder for first-time home uh, buyers uh, to get that first loan. It's made it more expensive for them to get that first loan if they're able to maneuver through uh, the red tape and mountains of regulations of Dodd-Frank. And what it's done to small business lending has been devastating, again, increasing the cost of small business loans and in many cases denying small businesses that ability to get a first-time loan. Uh, so we are taking real strong action to provide that relief with the Financial Choice Act and I appreciate the work that Chairman Henseling and his committee did uh, to get this bill in a position where we can bring it to the floor tomorrow, have a strong vote and send it over to the Senate where hopefully they'll follow suit and provide that relief uh, for families in our local communities who are struggling under the weight of a failed law. Uh, unfortunately, when we talk about failed laws, there are so many of them out there. And uh, this week, we just heard more news about the failures of Obamacare. Uh, you just saw in Ohio uh, where Anthem is pulling out of the entire healthcare marketplace in that state. And a new report came out showing just how devastating Obamacare has been at raising costs for families across the country over a hundred percent increases literally doubling premiums for families since Obamacare passed till today in my home state of Louisiana it's been even worse uh, where average premium increases have been over 120 percent because of the failures of the law uh, luckily we passed a bill through the House to provide relief from Obamacare for families. I know the Senate's working to get to a point where they can provide similar relief by passing their bill, and we encourage them to keep doing the work that they're doing uh, to get a bill to President Trump's desk. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see the expanded media presence in the Capitol this week here to cover our Financial Choice Act. Um, <laughs> um, over the past five months, uh, we have spent a lot of time and a lot of effort reforming our regulatory policy at the federal government. Uh, that is because it is very, very important. It's vital to creating good paying jobs and getting back to real economic growth. And it's also because we promised the American people this is what we would do if we got control of government, if we won this election. We see the Financial Choice Act as the crown jewel of this effort. This legislation comes to the rescue of Main Street America. The Dodd-Frank Act the Dodd-Frank Act has had a lot, a lot of bad consequences for our economy, but most of all in the small communities across our country. Community banks are going out of business because they cannot deal with the, costless, the costly and the countless rules. Look, so many of us represent middle America. Big businesses can get loans in big cities from big banks, but everybody else doesn't get their money that way. And we are losing community banks by the day. 
And most of the jobs in this country come from community banks, come from small businesses. They who take a risk, these entrepreneurs, these small businesses, they go and get credit from the community bank. And that's where job growth comes from. And the reason we haven't had the kind of economic growth that we need in this country is because of the regulatory structure. This bill fixes that. So this is something that we hear back home all of the time. This is very important legislation, which we think is just absolutely critical to getting this economy growing and to getting small businesses, farmers, ranchers, entrepreneurs, the kind of capital and the credit they need to take risks, to grow, to hire people, to increase wages. This also repeals the too big to fail, which makes taxpayer bailouts of Wall Street a thing of the past. Simply put, this is a jobs bill for Main Street. The Financial Choice Act makes it possible for small businesses across this country to stop struggling and to start hiring. I want to commend Chairman Hensling and his committee, Mia Love and everybody on their committee. They have put years of work into this. This is a very important piece of legislation we're very excited about bringing through Congress today because this is a key piece of our agenda to get the regulatory reform agenda put through, to get jobs growing, and to get the economic growth that we really need and deserve in this country. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Uh, Mr. Speaker, you've told a story before in the last couple of days, weeks, even. Has the president ever asked you to weigh in publicly on his behalf on some of the Russia allegations mm -hmm. or related to any of these investigations that we've seen? No. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask about the debt ceiling and when Congress will address that. Um, Secretary Mnuchin had said that it needed to be sooner rather than later. Um, and also to see if the president had told you in your meeting yesterday who's in charge of. Uh, the debt yeah, so and, we're uh, gonna we're gonna address the debt ceiling before we hit the debt ceiling. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> we're we're, we're be? yeah, before it hits. Um, <laughs> so uh, naturally, the Treasury Secretary should be in charge of the debt limit because it's the Treasury Secretary who who runs the numbers, who runs the levers that control the flow of us paying our, our debts. So the Treasury Secretary is and should always be the person in charge of debt limit negotiations, debt limit legislation. Uh, so that's that's a natural thing. Every Treasury Secretary is in charge of that. Clearly, the, the Treasury Secretary wants us to do it earlier than later. That, that's what every Treasury Secretary is says and should be saying. Um, we're going to work with them on this. Um, we're having long, ongoing conversations with our members about how to address this, and we'll address it before we hit the debt limit. Rachel. I'm not going to I'm not going to negotiate with myself in the media. We're going to we're going to have these kinds of conversations with our members and find the best way forward. Well, we'll, we'll come up with a solution. Are you ready to rely on them though? Uh, in your I'm not going to get into it because I'm not going to I'm not foreclosing any option at this time. We're having those kinds of conversations not with just our members, but with Democrats and with um, the other side of, of, of the Capitol Rotunda over in the Senate. Last question. Yeah. Christina. Do you support the president's stance encouraging other Middle Eastern countries to Pressure on Qatar, given the size of the U.S. military base there and its importance. In the no, I've been to Qatar a number of times. I've been to the military base there. Uh, it's a very important for us. But I do think that that we should put some pressure on Qatar uh, because Qatar um, has. Uh, I think they can improve their foreign policy. Let's just put it that way. Did the president consult you at all on the FBI? Yeah, I'm sorry. To no, he didn't. Just no, but I, uh, Ray, right? Uh, yeah, seems I don't know the guy, but he, I've looked at his resume. He seems like the, the right perfect. He looked. He seems like to me, he's the perfect kind of person. 